Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying the series of videos on backpacking with dogs so far. I originally wanted to do this third video as like a short, well organized, top three best, top three worst things about backpacking with dogs, but change of plans. Instead, I think it's more important to focus on the reality of backpacking with a dog, both the good and the bad. Quick disclaimer before we jump into all of this, everything shared here is my own opinion and comes from my own personal experiences. And you might disagree with me, that's fine, so long as we're all respectful about it. So let's start with the positive side and then kind of get into the more serious part of the topic. Backpacking with dogs is an incredibly rewarding experience and for all of its challenges and struggles, it's absolutely worth it overall. There's a reason we call dogs man's best friend. They make fantastic companions both at home and on the trail. Dogs are very aware of their surroundings and while it can be pretty unsettling in the middle of the night, you're trying to doze off and you know, they hear something outside the tent and are alerted, they pop up and growl or bark at it. You know, that can be pretty unsettling, but overall it's a very comforting thing that this dog is listening in and just staying aware of everything going on around you. They're kind of like my personal alarm system when we're going down the trail. I know, as soon as I see their little radar ears perk up, that there's either another hiker up ahead that we need to make room for or there might be a critter somewhere you know up ahead and i know to make some noise to avoid any unwanted wildlife encounters whatever it is they're always aware of what's going on and this definitely helps me personally keep from zoning out while walking and not paying attention to just the things going on around me Another great thing about backpacking with dogs is it offers this feeling of independence. You get parts of the solo hiking experience without being truly alone. Obviously, the dog is not going to be able to hit the SOS button for you on your inReach, but if you do get into some trouble with a well, they might be able to help out. Overall, you get that feeling of freedom and independence that comes with hiking by yourself while still having company, which sounds like an oxymoron. But this is a really great thing if you're someone who wants to experience solo hiking, solo backpacking, but those feelings of loneliness can kind of get to you. You've still got somebody there at the end of the day to curl up next to the fire with. You kind of have half a hiking buddy, someone to help take the edge off of that lonely feeling. Aside from companionship, I think one of the very best parts of backpacking with a dog is they've got no expectations. I kind of talked about this in Nora's first backpacking trip. It was like the aha moment of, yes, this is, this is why people backpack with dogs. They have really no expectation. All they know is they are with you and you guys are going somewhere together. And that's such a beautiful thing. It doesn't matter to them if the sites aren't all that's advertised or if the weather takes a turn for the worse or if you have to pack up a day early. None of those things matter. Like I said, hey, all girl. that matters is you guys are hey. together. Now this is kind of determined by the company you keep, but if let's say there's some kind of debacle on the trip or if it just doesn't turn out how you were expecting in a negative way, you don't really have to worry about your canine companion complaining about it or kind of bringing a negative mood or negative attitude to the already kind of sucky situation. In fact, there are plenty of times when I'm having a really hard time mentally with whatever is going on and the dogs will just bring such a ray of positivity to it. On a kind of sad note, unlike a human companion, dogs can't really reminisce with you about 
the things you've seen and done and the places you've been together. They definitely remember some things. I'm pretty sure Barrett is keeping a mental logbook of all the patches of grass he's rolled in on our adventures together. Overall, backpacking with a dog is just a very worth it and rewarding experience. But it's also a huge responsibility. And that's where we're gonna get into the more serious side of this topic. Dogs are great companions, but they're still animals. Animals that do really weird stuff. They like to roll in dead things and poop, or even worse, think that it's like a free buffet bar. They're still animals. And animals have instincts. You can certainly train them to behave and respond in certain ways, but at the end of the day, you'll never completely train those instincts out of them. And this is different to every breed and even age of dog. With age comes more maturity and impulse control, but definitely an important factor with this is the breed and what kind of traits and just personality characteristics, what instincts are strong in that particular breed of dog. And my German Shepherds are a perfect example for this. They were bred with a purpose to guard and protect and shepherd the thing that they have care over, or the thing that they feel they've been assigned to guard and protect. And that isn't inherently a bad thing. Where it can become a bad thing is if I, as a dog owner, don't take this into consideration and I just ignore it or neglect it and don't offer my dog any boundaries or authority and don't give them opportunities to channel and put these sort of internal traits, this drive to do a job into practice. If I don't give them opportunities to do that in a constructive manner, that can be a very bad thing. This is where having a dog on the trail becomes a huge responsibility. Training is not some two week doggy boot camp program you ship them off to and then they come home magically obedient for the rest of their lives. It is a lifetime process. It's not just some quick thing you do and then it's just they magically know what to do and how to respond in every situation appropriately forever. That's not the reality of it. And while training the way that they should respond is very important, I also don't put them into situations that would cause them to become unnecessarily defensive. What I mean by that is I don't let people pet my dogs while we are on the trail. While we're walking, they're kind of at work. There's time to play and relax and all of that at camp, but when that pack goes on and we're walking, it is their job to stay with me, walk with me, and ignore distractions. It's also part of their job to stay aware of our surroundings but predominantly their job is to walk with me and not get distracted. I also know that my dogs do not like when strangers reach out and grab them and touch them. It scares them, so it works best for everyone involved if we just don't do that. The dogs get plenty of socialization other places. They've got lots of dog friends and people friends at home off of the trail but while we are on the trail, they have a purpose to serve and a job to do. So socialization in that aspect of stopping and interacting with all the different people and other dogs on the trail, that is not what, what I have them do. And 90% of the time, this goes fine. There's no problem, but I do encounter every once in a while the people who will not take no for an answer. So they'll ask to pet them, I'll nicely say no, and then they'll come back with something like, oh, well, I'm a dog person, or I'm really good with animals, so it's okay, and they'll do it anyway. 
Again, usually this is fine. There's no issue, but every so often it will startle the dog and they'll jump back and bark and then it's this awkward situation. I feel obligated to apologize, but you know, every so often that does happen and it is a reality of it. And another kind of reality like this is sometimes the dogs just get scared or defensive for no reason. It's gonna happen. I tend to give people a lot of extra room when we pass them on the trail. So if it's a wide path, move them to the opposite side of me, give them their commands to ignore and we move on our way. Or if it's really narrow, I'll kind of move them into a spot off of the trail where people have plenty of room to pass, give them commands, we wait patiently and get back on our way. This is usually an uneventful, just part of our routine. But every so often, the dogs might get scared or defensive and usually people are understanding about it, but you also have the small group of people that are not understanding and just try to make you feel like the worst person in the world, like you've just got this crazed rabid beast on the loose and that is not the case at all. Yes, the dog is making a big scary sound, but we're nowhere near them and at no point are they out of my restraint or control. I could be wrong here, but I've kind of noticed a general lack of respect when it comes to owners and strangers on both ends. You've got owners who seem to think that their dog is going to be friends with everybody and everyone they meet is going to want to be friends with them and so they don't give other people their proper boundaries and space. They don't really respect that. And then on the opposite end, you've got strangers who think that every dog they meet is just going to be so cuddly and friendly and want to be their best friend. And so they don't give respect to the animal or the owner and kind of those boundaries put in place. Again, I could be wrong, but that just kind of seems to be the way things are going. I guess because dogs really are such an important part of our society and culture and so we can kind of get lazy or forgetful about the fact that yes these are our companions but they are still animals and uh, animals have instincts not every single dog wants to be your best friend and not every single person wants your dog slobbering all over them getting in their personal space so that's kind of it. That's the reality of backpacking with a dog. You have this wonderful hiking buddy by your side, but at the same time, they're a huge responsibility that requires constant training and boundaries. I hope that I've clearly expressed everything here today and that nobody, you know, takes something that I said out of context and runs with it but it's the internet, what else could I expect? Thank you so much for just tuning in, if you have, for these videos about backpacking with dogs. If you'd like to see more content on this topic or some other backpacking related topic, be sure to let me know. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Maybe just don't go hiking. No, that's not an option.